Hello, my fellow YouTubers. This is Big Boss Man D'Lo, comedian, singer, a.k.a. The Angry Father. And I'm here proudly to introduce you to Jammin' Music Man. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to my all-new DVD review video. And today I'm going to be reviewing one of the biggest horror movie franchises in movie history. Do you think you know what it is? Hmm. I'll give you a hint. I have the glove. I have the t-shirt. Do you think you know? Well, if you said a nightmare on Elm Street, then you are correct. What's up guys, it's me Jammin' Music Man and welcome to my special new video and in this video I'm gonna be reviewing A Nightmare on Elm Street, the 8 movie collection set. That's right, all of the Nightmare on Elm Street films minus the Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 remake. We won't talk about that, we'll just We'll just cut that out of this set right here. But you get all of the Nightmare on Elm Street films right here. And of course, with the Halloween season upon us, I'm getting into the Halloween spirit by digging out some of my favorite horror movie classics. And if you don't know this franchise, or if you don't know who Freddy Krueger is, come on, man, where have you been? But just to give you a brief little history of the franchise, Basically, Nightmare on Elm Street was created by Wes Craven, you know, the great horror uh, movie creator legend himself. You know, Wes Craven passed away about a year or two ago, and before, uh, you know, he really hit it big with the Nightmare on Elm Street, he created, like, horror classics like Last House on the Left, which came out, like, the early 70s, and then, uh, you know, he also hit it big with The Hills Have Eyes, but when a Nightmare on Elm Street was created, created that really you know he really hit pay dirt with that because little did he know that this one little movie would become a big movie franchise and it's still big today with lots of you know legions of fans all around the world who love this franchise series right here but uh you know basically Wes Craven got the idea of Freddy Krueger is because he read this story of a uh I believe it was a guy in like the Philippines or uh, India, somewhere like there. Basically, this guy was telling everyone that he was going to die in his sleep, that someone was uh, going to try to kill him. If you hear that whining, that's pork chop. Pork chop's trying to say hello. But back to the story. Basically, Wes Craven, he read this story about this guy who was having these dreams or these premonitions that he was going to die in his sleep, that someone was tr going to try to kill him until this guy really did fall asleep and died. And that gave Wes Craven, you know, basically the idea of, you know, boogeyman terrorizing, uh, you know, people in their sleep. But with the original film, it came out in 1984. And during that time, horror movies was still in, you know, the, the early 80s slasher craze with Friday the 13th uh, series. It was popular at the time. And, you know, when this movie hit it big, you know, Jason Voorhees finally had a rival in Freddy Krueger. And to give you, you know, a little backstory of Freddy Krueger, Freddy Krueger, you know, he was really this bad guy who was, you know, killing kids in the neighborhood until one day, that's right, one day, the parents in the neighborhood, they banded together, they hunted Freddy Krueger down and threw him in a boiler room and killed him. Well, years later, when the kids are a little bit older and in high school, Freddy Krueger comes back to terrorize the kids in their sleep. And, uh, you know, basically the original stars, uh, you know, Heather Langenkamp, I believe that's her name, Heather Lane Kemp, as Nancy and her group of friends and her boyfriend played by Johnny Depp. You know, they're just mild-mannered high school teens. And, you know, Freddy Krueger is terrorizing them in their sleep. And a lot of the parents, you know, they don't believe Nancy or the other teens at the time that there's somebody trying to kill them in their sleep until they, uh, a lot of Nancy's friends actually start dying off. 
and her boyfriend, played by Johnny Depp. And one of my all-time favorite death scenes in a movie when Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp is on that bed and basically Freddy Krueger's hand appears and, you know, drags him into the bed and, you know, the blood starts spewing out and spewing all over the ceiling. One of my all-time favorites and that freaked me out as a kid and, uh, you know, you know, like I said, the original became a big instant success. And that leads us to A Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge. This movie would come out a year later in 1985. Basically, the plot line of uh, Part 2 is this, uh, you know, this family. They move into the home of where Nancy uh, used to live. And this kid, you know, he's like the new kid in school and he's trying to fit in and he meets this girl and, you know, he's trying to make friends and he's having all these nightmares with Freddy. And basically, you know, some of the friends he meets, basically they're having nightmares too about this Freddy Krueger guy. And uh, basically, uh, at the end of uh, part two, they're at this, like, party, and Freddy Krueger appears, and of course, you know, they try to kill Freddy. But I have to say, Nightmare on Elm Street 2, Freddy's Revenge is really not one of my favorites of the franchise series. And, uh, you know, there was some cool scenes, like when Freddy's the bus driver, I really like that scene. But a lot of people, you know, Say like part two has a lot of gay overtones in the film. And, you know, for you hardcore fans out there, you know what I'm talking about. Especially that one scene when the coach is at that uh, leather bar and then he ends up going to the shower at the school and he's getting his ass whipped, you know. And plus, the main lead character guy, I can't remember what his name, you know, there's a big question mark, you know, is this guy gay or straight? But... Uh, like I said, Elm Street 2, not one of my favorites in the franchise, but that leads us to Nightmare on Elm Street 3. Oh, I almost poked my eye out there. Uh, Dream Warriors. This is probably my second favorite in the franchise. And basically the plot line for uh, Elm Street 3, Dream Warriors, basically Nancy, she's a little bit older now. She's like a psychologist. And she's helping these, like, teens in, like, this mental asylum. And a lot of them have, like, sleep issues. And, you know, they're talking about, you know, there's this boogeyman in their sleep. And, uh, you know, basically, man, she's trying to help these teens, you know, to band together to kill Freddy. And, uh, you know, basically, the teens in the group, there's this one kid who's, like, in a wheelchair. And, you know, when he's... Uh, when he's sleeping, you know, he dreams he's the wizard master. And then there's the one girl, you know, she dreams of being an actress. And that's where we get the classic Freddy, uh, Freddy line, uh, welcome to primetime, bitch. Also, when she gets killed, it's another one of my favorite death scenes. And, uh, you know, you get Kincaid. You know, I believe if you love Elm Street, you love, uh, you know, the character Kincaid. And, of course, who could forget... Uh, the legendary metal group Dokken singing the theme song Dream, uh, Dream Warriors. We're the Dream Warriors. Great song right there. And of course, uh, Elm Street 4, The Dream Master. Basically, uh, the plot line of this movie, it's, uh, uh first off, Pat Patricia Arquette stars in, uh, Part 3, The Dream Warriors, and she didn't return to Part 4, so her character had a friend named, I believe, Alice in Part 4, The Dream Master, and Kincaid, and I forget the other guy's character's name, you know, they're in Part 4, and basically, you know, Freddy's trying to kill a whole nother, you know, group of teenagers in their sleep. Can they... You band together and get rid of Freddy. Hey, you're just going to have to buy this set and see. Part 4, it's okay. Um, I would probably rank it, you know, maybe my third or fourth favorite in the franchise. Um, so then that leads us to Elm Street 5, The Dream Child. And I got to say, The Dream Child is really not one of my favorites 
in the series. And but in part five, we learn more about Freddie's mother, uh, Amanda Kruger. She was like a you know a nurse, and we learn more you know how uh, you know Freddie was treated as a child. And I want to say Alice, like she's pregnant. She thinks she's pregnant with Freddie's uh, child, and you know of course you know she's got to kill Freddie. You know it was really by this point that the whole Elm Street series was really. You know, starting to go a little bit dry at this time. And then that leads us to Freddy's Dead, The Final Nightmare. And I actually like this movie. And I actually remember when this movie came out. Basically, you know, you get a, another group of, uh, you know, young teenagers who are, you know, being terrorized by Freddy in their sleep. And also you get some special cameo appearances from... Uh, uh, Roseanne and Tom Arnold and, and, and when this movie came out they were kind of controversial figures because it was right after when Roseanne uh, you know destroyed the national anthem at that baseball game back in the early 90s and another cool death scene in uh, uh, Freddy's Dead is I believe it's uh, uh, what is that actor's name uh, I can't remember he was in uh, Road Trip and Clueless, I believe. Can't remember his name right now. When he's playing the video games and Freddy kills him in the uh, video games. It's got that great old school NES look. I always loved that scene. And of course, uh, let's see. That leads us to Wes Craven's New Nightmare. New Nightmare, I remember this one coming out too. This one came out like 1994. So it was like 10 years later after the original. And of course you get everyone playing themselves, which I really did like that concept. You get Wes Craven playing himself. The actress that plays Nancy, she's playing herself. Miko Hughes, for all you 90s kids who know who uh, Miko Hughes is, he's in the film. And of course, you know, we'll get a brand new, fresh looking Freddy in this film. And if you haven't seen uh, New Nightmare, I, I highly recommend it. go checking it out. And then the final film, Freddy vs. Jason. I remember Freddy vs. Jason uh, coming out. I was very excited at the time. I remember it came out the year that I graduated uh, from high school, 2003, and uh, just a fun flick. And, you know, I'm not going to give any spoilers away for, any, for anybody who's never seen Freddy vs. Jackson. But you get eight films in all with this set. And right now I'm going to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. Alright you guys, there you see a good look of the DVD set right there next to my Freddy Cougar gloves. I picked this glove up at my local Hot Topics. It was about $20. Pretty cool for anyone who's interested. But this is the DVD set. There you see you get a good look of Freddy Krueger himself. There you see eight discs. Uh, Nightmare on Elm Street collection. Turn it around. This is what it looks like on the back. Get some photo stills of all the movies. There you get the the uh, the movie listings of what come with the set. Of course, you get the original part two, three, four, five, six. Wes Craven's New Nightmare and Freddy vs. Jason. And now I'm just going to show you guys what it looks like on the inside. See the back of the DVD case, but this is what it looks like on the case and the inside, same as the uh, outside cover. But basically, this is what the disc looked like. Nothing really fancy about them. Just wanted to show you guys for anyone who's interested and in wanting to get this set. This is what it looks like. But as you see it, you get eight discs and all. Well, all right, guys. There you see a good look of what it looks like on the inside. Uh, like I've told you guys, you get eight films and all with this set. I picked this set up at my local Walmart. Uh, I probably spent maybe $20. I've also seen online where this thing's going for like $30 to $35. 
And if you gotta ask me, I probably would go to my local Walmart and like, you know, get it for 20. Um, you don't get any special features with this set right here. Only thing you really get is like widescreen and full screen. Um, I'm not real sure if you get any of the trailers with the set. Let me double check for you guys real quick. I don't think you do. Basically, you just get a widescreen or standard uh, screen version of uh, each and every film. But if you're a fan of the Nightmare on Elm Street series, I highly recommend picking it up. I'm not real sure if they put all these films in one big set on Blu-ray. Yeah, you know, uh, it might be the only way you can get it now is on DVD. But uh, like I said, I wouldn't spend no more than $20 on this set. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope this video was helpful for anyone out there wanting to pick up this set right here. Uh, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. Like this video, of course. Leave me a comment, of course. Subscribe to my channel. And I hope to do some more hard DVD reviews for you guys for this whole month in October. But guys, I'm Jamming Music Man. Thanks for watching. And keep. Staying alive. Oh, yes. Staying alive. Don't fall asleep. Ha, 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 ha. Stay alive. Stay alive. Ha, 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 ha. Stay alive. See you guys next time.